Hi and welcome to a video for Calculus 1 on simplifying expressions that will then lead us into having the calculus discussion of how to find a limit of a function. So in your calculus course you will be discussing how to find limits of functions graphically or from some algebraic expressions. So we're going to take a look at how to simplify some of those expressions um, before you get into that limit or calculus discussion. So let's take a look at this problem from your notes. And from our notes, this will be question four, part B. Now, again, you'll have this limit discussion when you get to your calculus class. But for right now, we're going to look at the highlighted here expression that I have, x squared minus 2x over x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I'm going to write down the limit um, notation in front of this that you'll talk about when you get to your calculus course because again if you don't have this limit notation all you're really doing is the pre-calculus which is what we're going to work on right now. So we need that limit in order for this to be a calculus problem. So what I hope that you can see is in the numerator I can factor out an x so I will do that and in the denominator I can factor that quadratic trinomial into x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 2. And I can see that one of those factors of x minus 2 will divide to 1. Again, when you scratch things out and you say they cancel, I, I'm careful when I use that term. I actually don't use it because sometimes you say cancel to mean a 1 and other times you say cancel to mean a 0. So I will always say things like those divide, those factors of x minus 2 will divide to leave a 1 behind, but I don't have to write it. And I'm just going to copy down then what I have left over so I can then later have my calculus discussion. So I've removed this factor of x minus 2 that I circled. So all I have left in the numerator is x and in the denominator x minus 2. And if you wanted to put that in brackets or parentheses, you can. And again, then when you get to calculus, you can have that discussion of what that means and how to evaluate that limit. All right, now let's take a look at um, this problem right here, which currently is our number 6. The limit as x approaches 3 is how that is read of the quantity x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Again, this is probably a rational expression that you simplified in a prior course. Hopefully you recognize x squared minus 9 as a difference of squares, so that will factor into its conjugate pairs. And then I can see that some factors will divide out, and so I can simplify this. So let's see what this will look like here. Limit as x approaches 3. Again, that's our calculus notation that you'll have that discussion when you get to calc. So this, what we talked about, this difference of squares in the numerator will factor into its conjugate pairs, x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3, all over the factor of x minus 3. Then my factors of x minus 3 will divide to 1, and so all I have left is limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3 technically divided by 1, which I don't need to write. All right, let's continue down that path. Now maybe something that we're a little less familiar with factoring. Um, again, I'll carry down that limit notation, but let's look at does this rational expression simplify? Well, some of us may have forgotten our sum of cubes formula. Um, so even though we can recognize that this is the sum of cubed, this first term right here is x cubed and 125 is 5 cubed, we may not recognize how to factor it. It is not equal, oops, x cubed plus 125 is not equal to x plus 5 quantity cubed. If you distribute that, you will see that those two are not equivalent. So hopefully we remember that. Okay, well, what is it equivalent to? So if we don't remember, most of us can probably agree that since x cubed is, the cube root of that is x, and the cube root of 125 is 5, that's how I could tell it was the sum of cubes, one of the factors is probably x plus 5, right? So I can probably recognize at least that much. So then what I would do is go off to the side and because my factor is x plus 5, 
that means my solution would be negative 5, or this crosses the x-axis at an x value of negative 5. So I'm going to use synthetic division here to help me out. So I'm going to say negative 5, and I'm going to divide it out of that cubic. So 1x cubed, and remember with synthetic division you need perfect descending order. So this will be like my x cubed coefficient, for example. 0 would be the coefficient of my x squared term, and there's nothing wrong with sort of keeping track as you go here. Then 0x and then plus 125. All right, so now for synthetic division, I will carry down my first coefficient, so 1. And then this negative 5 out here that was that solution of the factor turns out to be the multiplier. So 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And I'll write that right here. Add down. Multiply, so negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Add down. 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. Add down, you should get 0 because that's your remainder. Divide in evenly because I was suggesting that x plus 5 was a factor. Or in other words, I was suggesting that limit as x approaches negative 5. That's again going to be that calculus part of this discussion here. But I'm suggesting that this begins to look in factored form like x plus 5 as a quantity times some other factor. And I'll factor the denominator here in a few minutes. So I'm trying to put this rational expression in factored form so I can see if I have any common factors. Okay, um, so I did my synthetic division and my x plus 5 is this negative 5 solution right there. So then this leftover is the trinomial that goes in my parentheses here. So it's 1x squared because again you can only use synthetic division when you're dividing by a linear factor. So your power will decrease by 1. So if I had x cubed, now I have x squared. Minus 5x plus 25. And if you did the sum or, or difference of cubes correctly, you'll notice that that trinomial that's left over does not factor. Okay? All right, and then now I need to see if that denominator factors. Well, I'm going to give you a hint that in most of these rational expressions, you're trying to reduce this. You're trying to find factors that will divide to 1. So I'm hoping x plus 5 is one of those factors. So that is sort of my, I don't want to say cheat, but that's sort of the first thing that I'm going to test out. Would one of the factors be x plus 5? Well, then this other factor here would have to be 2x then my last two will have to multiply to be negative 15, so the only way that would work is if that's a minus 3. Now you really have to be careful that you're checking this somehow. So one suggestion to check just your factored form. Did you do the algebra correct? Certainly you can multiply you know, all of this out, right? But if you thought 5 times 3 was 10, you know, and you made an error, you might see that for the whole problem. So let's let technology help us do the check here. So let me grab my graphing calculator and let's take a look at how I can use technology to help me check to see if I have all my factors correct. All right, so here's my graphing calculator. Now what I'm trying to assess is, is this the same as this? So my two green highlighted expressions and is the blue equivalent to the blue. So I'm going to put in my calculator here some random number for x. And I'm going to use my store button, which is right above on. So I'm going to say something like 3.5, because that does not have anything to do with my limit. You know, our limit was as x approaches negative 5. So 3.5 store as x. Store again right above your on, x like your variable. This only stores it as x on your home screen, so don't worry about your graphs or anything like that. So now I can just type in x to the third 
plus 125, and I can see what value that is. That is 167.875. That's not important, but what is important is if I type in this other green, that I get the same value. So I typed in x cubed plus 125. I got that value. I typed in what I believe the factored form of that expression is, and I got the exact same value. So I know at least the two green ones are equivalent. And now I'll do the same thing for the denominators, just making sure that I have factored this expression correctly before I continue on. Okay, so I've typed in the beginning blue denominator, and now what I believe its factored form is. And again, I get the same value. Those values are not important to this problem whatsoever. I just want them to be the same. And again, I typically pick something that's not, you know, like a one or a two or a zero. That could lead me to a false positive. Um, it's not ambiguous. So now I can see that I have factored this rational expression completely. And I can see now that I have the common factors here of x plus 5. So if I rewrite this again, don't forget for now, just copy down that limit expression. And because again, that's going to be our calculus discussion. But our simplified rational expression would be x squared minus 5x plus 25 all over the binomial 2x minus 3. And that's what we would be now working with. Okay, two other quick, um, hopefully, reminders of things that you learned in a pre-calc type course might be something that looks like number eight. And you may have said when you were in trig or pre-calc, hey, why did I have to learn all those trig identities, right? Well, here's going to be one application for the trig identity, certainly not the only one. If you make it to calc two, you're going to see lots of, of applications. But um, let's just assume that we've already gone through the calculus thought process and we know we need to try to simplify this whole expression inside the green. So I'm going to copy down limit as x approaches pi over 2 and I'm just going to leave that for right now. And there's nothing I can really do with my numerator right this second, but my denominator, I absolutely can write all of these in terms of sine and cosine to see if something kind of jumps out at me. Secant of x, for example, is the reciprocal of, hopefully you were able to answer that, cosine x. And tangent x, so I'll put minus tangent x in terms of sine and cosine, would be sine x over cosine x. Now I hope that you can see in your neat work as you're going through these notes, your separator from your numerator to denominator. And what I notice now is that I have sort of this complex fraction going on where I have fractions within my numerator and or my denominator. And so you could certainly go through the process of finding a common denominator, getting the common denominator, and then multiplying by the reciprocal and all of that. But I like to just clear out the complex fractions within one step. So since my common denominator in the denominator is cosine of x, because see both of those are cosine of x right there, I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by cosine of x. And I do have to distribute, okay, and I do have to make sure that I do this correctly. I'm just rewriting this. Um, I'm not necessarily changing any values because I'm multiplying by 1. Cosine x over cosine x is 1. So my new numerator becomes cosine squared of x, and remember we can write it like that. Now if I distribute this cosine x into both terms in my denominator, I get 1 minus sine x. And I'm going to stop there only because sometimes your algebra will be enough. One thing that you hopefully see um, is that cosine squared x 
could be rewritten and then maybe I can do more. It may or may not be needed depending on our problem. So for now, again, I will leave that written in that way. Let's look at one more um, common denominator style problem here. All right, so last one for this video. If this is my overall limit that I'm working with, what algebra do we think we know? Well, here's my overall fraction bar. So I have that complex fraction idea where I have fractions in my numerator and in my denominator. So I'm going to use the same technique I used in the previous problem, but not with trig, with algebra. I'm going to multiply by the common denominator of the whole thing. So if I look at all of these denominators, what would that common denominator be? Well, it's going to be x times the quantity x minus 4, and then I don't need to repeat that other x because it's in there already. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by x times the quantity x minus 4 and the denominator by x times the quantity x minus 4. That means I'm multiplying by a factor of 1, so I am not changing the value. I'm simply changing the way this will appear. So again, you have to distribute what you are multiplying by. So these x minus 4s, for example, will divide to 1, and it'll just leave that 1 times the x in my first term. Then minus the x's now divide out, and it would leave the 1 times the quantity x minus 4. Now, can you look and see why this 1 that I'm starring right here might be important? Well, if you forget it, you're going to also forget to distribute that negative right, because you would have to distribute it to the entire quantity of x minus 4. So I just write it down. And then in my denominator here, the x's would divide to 1, so I have x minus 4, and you can write it twice or you can write quantity squared. So I'll go ahead and multiply this um, through to remove the parentheses in the numerator, so I have x minus x plus 4. And then that leaves me with um, 4 over x minus 4 quantity squared. Now, a couple of things here. Make sure you're writing, even though it doesn't mean anything to you right at this moment in time, probably. You cannot just ditch this limit, right? That is the most important part of this problem. That's what makes it a calculus problem. Otherwise, you've actually simplified um, expressions that look like this before in your previous courses. So make sure you have the limit in front of it. And then the other thing is don't multiply out denominators unless you have a purpose or a reason for doing so. I don't want to certainly waste your efforts here. Um, a denominator in factored form is beautiful because then I can see any holes or vertical asymptotes, points of discontinuity, things like that. So those will be talking points for the future. So I don't multiply anything out. I certainly would combine like terms if I need to, but this denominator right now is in factored form, so you certainly do want to leave it. I hope you found this um, pre-calc video, if you will, getting you ready for some algebraic limits helpful. And I'll see you again to finish the, the section on limits.